The state is ordered through three things. The first is standards. The second, trustworthiness. The third, authority. Standards are what the ruler and ministers jointly uphold. Trustworthiness is what the ruler and ministers jointly establish. Authority is what the ruler exclusively regulates. When the sovereign loses what he should preserve, he is endangered. When the ruler and the ministers cast away standards and rely on their private views, turmoil will surely ensue. Hence, when standards are established, divisions are clarified. And when standards are not violated for private reasons, then there is orderly rule. When authority and regulations are decided exclusively by the ruler, he inspires awe. When the people trust his rewards, success is accomplished. And when they trust his punishments, wickedness has no starting point. Only a clear-sighted sovereign cares for his authority, takes trustworthiness seriously, and does not damage law through his private interests. Thus, when superiors talk much of kindness but are unable to make rewards viable, inferiors cannot be used. When severe orders are repeatedly promulgated but punishments are not inflicted, the people treat lethal punishment with contempt. In general, rewards are civilian means. Punishments are military means. Civilian and military means are the essentials of the law. Hence, the clear-sighted sovereign is cautious with regard to the law. The clear-sighted sovereign is called clear-sighted because nothing is concealed from him. He is called scrutinizing because he cannot be deceived. Thus, his rewards are bountiful and trustworthy. His punishments heavy and inevitable. In rewarding, he does not overlook strangers. And in punishing, he does not avoid relatives and intimates. Thus, the ministers cannot conceal anything from the sovereign, and inferiors cannot deceive superiors. Rulers of our age frequently cast away standards and rely on private deliberations. This is why the state is in turmoil. The former king set up scales and weights, established feet and inches, and we have used them until now as standards because they clarify distinctions. So if one discards scales and weights, yet tries to determine weight, or casts away feet and inches, yet judges length, then even if one excels at scrutinizing, merchants will not accept his judgment, considering it to lack in certainty. Standards are the scale and weight of the state, therefore, all those who turn their back on standards and measures and rely instead on private deliberations do not understand that these things are of the same category. Only Yao was able to discuss one's wisdom, ability, trustworthiness, or untrustworthiness without resorting to standards. Yet the world does not consist only of the likes of Yao. Therefore, the former kings knew that they could not rely on their own deliberations and private appointments. Hence, they established standards and clarified divisions, so that those who were within the norms were rewarded, and those who damaged the common interests were prosecuted. The standards of rewards and prosecutions did not lose their appropriateness. Hence, the people did not struggle. If one does not use ranks and appointments to benefit intimates and kin, hardworking ministers are not resentful. If one does not use punishments and penalties to obstruct strangers and outsiders, inferiors are close to superiors. Thus, when appointment to office and bestowal of rank are not done according to one's labor, loyal ministers are not promoted. When granting rewards and delivering emoluments are not in accord with one's merit, the fighting men are not used. In general, when ministers serve the ruler, they do it through what the ruler is fond of. When the ruler is fond of standards, then ministers serve him according to the standards. When the ruler is fond of talk, then ministers serve him through talk. When the ruler is fond of standards, then upright men of service stand before him. When the ruler is fond of talk, then he is surrounded by slandering or flattering officials.
when the common and the private are clearly separated, petty men do not envy the worthy, and the unworthy are not jealous of the meritorious. Hence, when Yao and Xun were established in all under heaven, this was not in order to benefit privately from all under heaven. They were established for the sake of all under heaven. They selected the worthy, elevated the able, and transmitted power to them, not because of alienation between father and son and intimacy with strangers, but because the way of order and disorder was clear to them. Hence the three kings treated their relatives righteously, and the five hegemons used law to rectify regional lords. All this was not in order to benefit privately from all under heaven. They ruled all under heaven for the sake of all under heaven. Hence they earned great name and attained merit. All under heaven was fond of their rule, and no one was able to harm them. But now rulers and ministers of this calamitous age act in a petty way, monopolizing the benefits of a single state and appropriating the authority of their office so as to benefit their private interests. This is the reason why the state is endangered. Hence, the interrelationship between the common and the private is the root of survival or ruin. When one casts away standards and measures and is fond of private deliberations, then villainous ministers sell power to arrange emoluments, while the underlings of ranked officials obscure the situation below and plunder the people. There is a saying, When there are plenty of woodworms, the wood will be broken. When a fissure is large, the wall collapses. Thus, when ministers compete for private interests and disregard their people, then inferiors are estranged from superiors. When inferiors are estranged from superiors, this is the fissure in the state. When the underlings of ranked officials obscure the situation below so as to plunder the people, these are the woodworms of the people. Thus few states under heaven can have fissures and woodworms and avoid being ruined. Therefore, the clear-sighted sovereign relies on standards and eliminates private deliberations. Then the state suffers from neither fissures nor woodworms.